This is Twit. Well, according to a six-month investigation by the ACLU, there's a new system called recognition, which is put on use of the is put in use by a number of agencies across America, including the police department for Orlando, Florida, uh, Washington County Sheriff's Office in Oregon, and in fact, it's a lesser-known system developed by Amazon. So. Let's, let's talk a little bit about case studies. So this particular system uses AI in order to do facial recognition. The Washington County Sheriff's Office caught a hardware store thief by running his image through facial recognition system, finding four hits with 80% success rate. By cross-referencing them with individual pictures of Facebook, go figure, they found out that the same hoodie that the person was wearing was actually worn in the theft as well. Imagine that. Another one, there were surveillance cameras that were caught. They actually caught someone uh, stealing a credit card and later found that was found to be stolen, actually. And the probability was that they found a low resolution photo of them and it was actually at a weird angle. And not only that, but Amazon's recognition system found a 95 percent match for them. If you were one of the lucky blokes or women who watched the royal wedding last week, Sky News actually used this system and this technology to recognize guests. And get this, the system is super cheap. Uh, for almost 40,000 images processed, departments would have to only pay $30.99. So in this past, in this uh, post published this past Tuesday, ACLU officials wrote the following. With recognition, a government can now build a system to automate the identification and tracking of anyone. If a police body camera, for example, were outfitted with facial recognition, devices intended for office transparency and accountability would further transform into surveillance machines aimed at the public. With this technology, police would be able to determine who attends protests. ICE would, could seek to continuously monitor immigrants as they embark on new lives. Cities might routinely track their own residents, whether they have reason to suspect criminal activity or not. And as with our surveillance technologies, these systems certain to be disappropriately aimed at minority communities. This creates a really interesting dynamic. Microsoft and others have been doing facial recognition longer than Amazon, but it seems Amazon is the first to commoditize it in a way. Or maybe they do it, they don't do it, and we simply just don't know about it. In fact, we saw that in Orlando, recognition is being used to find people of interest, quote unquote, using footage from cameras all over the city. So this is weird because it almost makes me feel like they're doing the same thing that China is doing as they surveil their entire con uh, country with millions and millions of cameras. So, Curtis, I actually want to throw this over to you first because you obviously you live in Orlando. Should, shouldn't we be told about this? Like, it's, it sounds like it's just the beginning. Um, it does sound like the beginning. And, uh, yes, I think that the the people of Orlando uh, should have been told about this. And there are a lot of people in Orlando who feel the same way. Uh, the pages of the Orlando Sentinel, the the paper of, of the, the city, um, have been filled with articles the last day or two since this news broke. A lot of comment. Uh, the broadcast news uh, outlets are also looking at this. Um, it's interesting because Orlando is a city where, in general, the um, <clears throat> the police department has enjoyed a pretty good relationship with uh, the population, although there have been, as in so many places, um, things that, that went wrong. Uh, Orlando um, embraced uh, body cameras for officers pretty early, um, used them a lot. Um, you know, Orlando is, is in an interesting situation um, because of a couple of things. One is that we are a city where so many visitors come. I mean, we are, we are uh, home of, of the, the top tourist destinations in the country. So we have a lot of visitors to Orlando, even though technically much of the attraction is, is outside the city limits. Um, the other is that we do have um, the legacy of the, the Pulse nightclub shooting, which was for um, an unfortunately brief time uh, the largest mass shooting in our nation's history. 
Um, the the law enforcement is is touchy. They try to stay on top of things, but I think what they've entered into now is a discussion with city government and with uh, the residents about both just how far they should be going and how much information they should be giving to the populace as they try new things. Now, they've said that this is just a pilot program, uh, basically just an experiment that they're running. Still, uh, the privacy implications are such that uh, a lot of people feel that they, they really should have been much more transparent about what they were doing uh, with the residents of, of Orlando. Right, right. So we balked, we balked a little bit of, at China for doing this to their citizens. Obviously, they're making it law. They're, they're, they're actually raiding citizens on this. I want to throw it over to you, Cheaper. Is, is, this, is this even legal to do this here in the United States? Well, it, obviously, I'm not a lawyer, but it is, they are, at the moment, from what I understand, only using these in public areas, places that have, quote, no expectation of privacy. Now, keep in mind, there is lots of precedence for this. During very large sporting events, uh, very large special events, there are cameras galore. Um, if you start bringing in um, something like, uh, let's talk London. London, rumors, has the most CCTV coverage of any modern metropolitan area. Now, if you look at the other side of this, we are asking our police forces to do an awful lot more with less, especially with all these school shootings and so forth. We have asked them to go and find the bad guys faster, uh, but we haven't been giving them giant leaps in budgets. I see this as a way of being able to leverage their people. What I would like to see them do, and this is obviously a policy issue, I want to make sure that there's some human intervention there. I want, I would love to have the system go and say, hey, if I'm going to put out a Beyond Lookout or a Bolo for a yellow van with Bondo on the court back quarter panel, I, you know, I want to be able to go and sh uh, show recognition, sample photos of a yellow van with Bondo on the quarter panel, and have it go and look through a lot of cameras. Um, and I would love to have them take the place of a huge number of people watching uh, CCTV coverage to try and find that. W isn't it a better way to have a system to go and help narrow the search down so that our skilled and trained police can go and do something? Now, obviously, there's, you know, we've had, we can argue the skilled police back and forth, but the reality is, is I'm, I'm ex-law enforcement and, um, the reality is we never have enough eyes to look at video. We never have enough police on the street. I see this as a way of giving the general public the level of safety they want. I just hope that our policymakers make sure that there's policy to also make sure that this video isn't stored. You know, I want it to be eyes and ears. I don't want it to be Big Brother. <laughs> 